go. Hi, this is Emmy Thomas, and I'm here with, uh, what what is your pseudonym again? RT. RT. Okay, and we're gonna talk <laughs> about Killing Eve, and RT has a take. So let's uh, let's hear your take on Killing Eve. Uh, from what I've seen, Killing Eve, an overview. I thought that the psychologists had put forward the theory that it's a series of behaviors that anyone can undergo at any time. But there's a tendency in psychopathic personalities to replicate these behaviours more. Uh, the reason I, I came from that was interesting. I remember that Constantine had a discussion with the young girl who was going to be the new villanelle. And he said that most she was unusual and that all of the other girls he trained came from traumatic backgrounds, violence or uh, close proximity to violence. Whereas this girl didn't. But what I think he was missing was that she did suffer, suffer a type of trauma, but it was different in that it was her family constantly telling her she had no value. She wasn't up to scratch. She was basically a burden that they had to put up with. And the effect of that on her was to crush her sense of personhood. Mm which had a similar effect to the traumatic events of the other girls, which possibly was why Constantine let his guard down and got himself killed, because he'd have been more careful around somebody like Gunn or Villanelle when they had a pizza cutter. Whereas with <laughs> this young girl, he didn't even notice it, did he? Until it was used as a weapon. So I, I thought that that was where I think they were quite clever because they gave the clinical description in, in various series and episodes. And then you see the more nuanced type of approach. For example, I would say that one of the, the purest sociopaths in the show was actually Caroline. Because when you think about it, she manipulated everyone constantly. And she also behaved quite unemotional. It's strange that more people didn't pick up on it. She was very charming, but if you remember back to her relationship with her daughter, which was, was dreadful, was basically dismissive. She's seen her as an intrusion at an inconvenient time. She, from an early age, even when she was first with the 12, when she was just there, she was basically the traitor in the mix. She was already working for MI5 and had infiltrated their group and was cynically collecting information on them when they were a minor threat. And I took away, my takeaway was, they may well have stayed a minor threat had she not been in the mix, because mm. she seemed to be the one that was manipulating and using sex to, to stir the rest up. She motivated them to higher levels of, of commitment to the point where they, they took on higher levels in intelligence agencies and eventually formed the 12. And I said, the other aspect that was interesting to me was the development of Eve as a character, because she started out as a normal person. She couldn't be more normal. She was nervous. She had a family. Her husband was a teacher. She had a very minor job, even though she was very clever. She was an analyst. She wasn't an active agent. And she went from that to being the kind of person who interrogated people by shooting them in the hand and you know, maiming our enemies rather than killing them clean, which is is a completely different behaviour. What would be interesting, though, for me is what, if they had one more series, what would have happened to Eve now? Because effectively, she's out of that world. She knows what Caroline is. She knows she's virtually untouchable. Um, obviously, spoilers, we now know that, that veronelle has been killed. So... Uh, she's basically free of all this, so she has the option to return or effectively to become another another player in the game. I don't see that, though, because she does have a strong sense of her own identity. The fact that she was concerned about losing her identity means that she had one, whereas none of the other sociopathic characters ever considered that. Villanelle tried to change... But she didn't really. She she came up with some weird religious delusion, but she was unable to 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 commit to the religion itself. She couldn't have faith. In other words, she knew the words and she got to know the people, 
But when you compare her to the man who, the father who theoretically was responsible for his wife's demise, he genuinely found a path through his religion to deal with his trauma. Whereas Villanelle was just playing the part. She was literally waiting for a saint to appear on the doorstep. So she created one, which is the opposite of what I understand religious belief is. You don't get to meet God and discuss the finer points, but that's her only way of dealing with it. So she wasn't particularly looking for religion. She was trying to become somebody that Eve would like, which was interesting, but it did show some growth though, because she did try and, and not kill people and she didn't seem to take quite the same relish in it as she did later on. Whereas then, of course, we had to draw the comparison with Gunn. When she met Gunn on the island, she, to me, is what Villanelle could have been had she not met Eve. She'd have just have been some isolated, crazy woman hunting wild boars till eventually one of them killed her. So, yes, yeah, so it was it was a very interesting show. As I said, um, my comments, I read all the books. I don't know if you read the books, but the no. third book is the third book is completely different. The, the storyline is completely different. It doesn't bear any resemblance. It's different. It's not any worse or better. I don't mind TV dramas deviating from the, the material. But yeah, it was it, to me, that was the point. There was a kind of almost a growth, but it was interesting as well. Another interesting character is Constantine a theoretical empath, but he also didn't grow, did he? He ruined his relationship with his daughter, who who he didn't realise that the violence of his activities was effectively creating yet another sociopath because he thought he was shielding her from this, but he wasn't. He uh, had a nice job in the Russian embassy, but rather than deal with the, the 12, he just went back to training these young women to become assassins. And he even said himself, one of these days, these girls are going to kill me. And sure enough, the one he did, they took his eye off the ball, she did. But it was, it was certainly an interesting, from a perspective of a comparison between the fictional psychopath, the more realistic one, and the empathic people. Because for most people in... in fiction the psychopath is the violent element they provide the danger the fear the the absence of remorse that sort of thing but in reality we know that empathic people are easily as capable of that level of violence just look at what's happening in ukraine yeah. you know we don't have three thousand psych psychopaths we've got ordinary people out there who feel you know, motivated to do horrendous acts. You've got, I was reading about um, 28 soldiers, two of which died, young Russian soldiers, because these grannies poisoned them wow. when they made them food. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, everybody, and also what was interesting was people were so impressed by this. And I thought, mm -hmm. this is an act of total barbarism. You, If anybody else did this, you would think they were insane, but you think because of the circumstances. So I'd say that was another thing that the show said to me. One of the key differences that fiction at least puts between normal people and sociopathic people is circumstances. Sociopathic people don't change in circumstances. They tend to react the same way to everything. But empathic people seem to have a whole gamut of of, a re of ways of reacting from falling to bits. Like Eve, you remember even in the very early days, the very sight of Villanelle, she was very realistically trying to hide in the bath like a five-year-old and pretending she wasn't there. And then she went right the way through to dropping from trees and mutilating people. But they, they did it quite realistically. They did it quite well. It was gradual. And there was one interesting element, though, that separated Eve, where she seemed to almost like come to her senses. When she was doing the karaoke, there's an important scene where she suddenly sees all the people who have directly or indirectly been killed by her getting to where she was. She started out as the analyst, remember, who first found out that Villanelle existed. There was a systematic assassination of relevant people across the world. She therefore tied into the 12, which therefore got her in contact with Caroline 
and directly and indirectly led to the death of our friends and family over the course of the, the number of years. And that to me was the bit where they were talking more about the empathic bit where she suddenly found her conscience again and realized that she had a part to play in this. Yeah. So I guess, you know, we maybe differ about a couple different things. I don't know that Eve was empathic. I don't, like, uh, I don't know that she's neurotypical. So I'm, I'm a little bit curious because you say that you cite an instance in which Eve uh, is worried about losing her sense of self. Is that the sense of self scene that you were talking about? The yes. And, and uh, but the way she's in the way Eve does it is quite rational and emotionally stable in the sense that some empath would because she was in danger of losing her identity, losing her sense of self, because in some ways she was playing a role. She was being um, Villanelle or she was being Caroline. Even a friend, a fellow agent, pointed that out to her that she was only playing the part of being these people. She was never divorced from what she did. She never felt happy or anything by what she was doing. She's seen everything she did as necessary and she considered it unavoidable. She became obsessive about it, but she did. I mean, I'd see it as neurotypical. Like I said, I cited the Ukrainian example. If you see it that way, Eve was basically at war. She was a soldier who'd been sent to war and she had to kill people because it was a war. But she was not like characters such as Villanelle, the young lady's name, I forget who was working in the, the last recruit, Gunn, Helena, people like that, who were basically, they were just playing a game. I mean, you notice that when Eve took Helena's daughter to use her as a lever, she never actually meant her any threat. And even though she, she never, let her know that that's what was going to do. But it was perfectly clear that had that not gone the right way, there wasn't any way she was actually going to hurt that little girl. Whereas had the situation been reversed, Helena, Villanelle, Gunn, any of those people would have hurt the little girl as soon as it became necessary to do so. So I don't, I don't know if she was... It's difficult to say because most cases they say abnormal our aberrant psychology is a result of things that happen in your youth. But there are cases with PTSD and people coming back from war zones where they can become uh, triggered by violence. But it usually happens where they have some form of flashback or some traumatic event. It never actually turns them into what people would class as a sociopathic personality type they don't ever become comfortable with it or accept it as just normal behavior. So that's why I think Eve is probably neurotypical but under stress. I mean, she's a survivor, don't get me wrong. She's, not, she's obviously the type of person who would fight and does fight to survive, but she never instigates the violence. She never does it without reason. She, she, even the man she shot in the shed she only killed him because she thought he was responsible for the death of um, Caroline's son. So that's where I would say she differs from the other characters that were uh, psychopathic. I mean, Constantine's an interesting character, isn't he? Where does he come on the spectrum? He doesn't actually kill people, but he trains people to kill people. And he's used as a handler for... Uh, people and his problem started when he, he slipped up when he got older because we got the impression from the early series that he kept a great distance between him and Villanelle despite the apparent closeness of the relationship she knew nothing about his family life she didn't know if he was married if he had children what he did for a living she basically knew nothing and at that time she was quite happy to do that it's only when she got more ambitious. And that, to me, was interesting because there's also a lot of um, work that suggests the older sociopathic personalities get, the less sociopathic they can become. They never become full empaths, but they become less inured to emotional responses. So Villanelle, when we first meet her, all she wants to do is have fancy restaurants, nice clothes, 
and find interesting ways to kill people. But meeting Eve stirs something in her just as it does in Eve and they kind of feed off each other. And she almost uses Eve as a kind of mirror to see emotional states. I find it interesting that she started to drift away from her when, as you said, Eve started to display more neuroatypical behaviors. She therefore didn't really serve as a good mirror for Villanelle because they became more similar. I don't think. Yeah, so what do you mean she, Villanelle started to drift away from her as well, he displayed less yeah, fewer neurotypical as, states? Yeah, as, as, he, as he became less normal, if you like, as she started to become more violent, she started to use more duplicitous means of getting what she wanted. She went on her own. Remember, Eve was always part of a group. That's very much an empathic thing. She was part of a unit. She was part of MI5. She was part of something. Whereas at the end, she was basically a private contractor just because it gave it cover to do what she wanted to do. And she only involved people like her boyfriend. Now, that was a very sociopathic relationship. She was going out with this man who was a colleague, not just to gratify herself physically, but because he had access to information and methods that she needed to find the 12. So that kind of behavior was more like the sort of behavior Villanelle would indulge in. But rather than see that as making them closer, I think Villanelle moved away because she became more like her and therefore less used to her and less interesting in some ways. I mean, if you look at Villanelle's relationship with Gunn, she basically had a bit of a fling with her and they were both waiting for the time when it was time to start trying to kill each other. Whereas she never really clicked with her the way she did. And, and she had, whereas Eve represented, I think, to Villanelle what she was trying to achieve when she found religion. She was almost trying to become less violent. She even said herself she wanted to try not killing people for a while, mm -hmm. which was very much what Eve, as an empathic person, was trying to impart to her, that you don't just kill people. I mean, remember, Eve, uh, when Villanelle, there was a case of, I think, C3, where to make a point, Villanelle pushed someone in front of a bus in front of Eve because she wanted to elicit that kind of... She realised the shock value was diminishing and Eve was starting to talk to her more as a kind of equal basis, like they were the same. And in order to break that spell, Villanelle deliberately killed someone right in front of her, just casually pushed this virtually innocent person in front of a bus. Yeah, and who that, was uh, the person she pushed, though? I, I a, don't remember this. I it mean, was it's a, not so, um, a stranger, right? It's No, no, it else. was a person who was, she had something to do with, some, they were trying to investigate someone, as I recall, and this person was an assistant that knew something about what they were doing. And it looked like she may have had information about Villanelle herself, mm -hmm. but only indirectly. So in other words, Eve thought she was going to go take care of the main protagonist. But instead, she, she killed his secretary, basically. So she came back out of the building and Eve's sitting in a cafe across the road. It's in London, I think. And she walks up to the person who was standing in the road. And it's quite a surprise. She just waits and suddenly she shoves her and she just goes straight in, under this bus and gets gets killed. And that, of course, elicits the kind of shock and fear reaction that she gets from Eve. But later on, that, probably because she doesn't understand that empathic people can become resilient to things. They become more inured to violence when they're trying to survive. So later on, she'd be doing shocking things. I mean, she could hardly shock Eve anymore. Eve was quite happy to drop on gun and mutilate her. She was quite happy to shoot someone when she had to, whereas before she wouldn't have done that. But we get a kind of redemption arc, don't we? Because in the final episode, they do decide to stay together. And it's hinted of nothing else that this is the end of them. They're not going to start looking for the 12 anymore. This, they now know the whole thing's a mess. And that, as Caroline said, they're just going to recruit some more people and make them the 12. Because there never is, in fact, 12 of them. There's just a rotating group of 
powerful people who run the world effectively. And at that point, they decide to leave. And this is when we see Caroline stepping into the limelight as the almost like Villanelle and Eve become the Eve character to Caroline's Villanelle because she's the one that does the cynical act of, right, I don't need you anymore. I want Eve at the picture, but I might need her later for something. So I'll just cripple her, basically. And the way to do that is to kill Villanelle who has also killed Helene and other people. And so there's a possibility that if she leaves her alive, she'll come looking for Caroline again. Now, I don't think that was very likely she would, but interestingly enough, for all Caroline's uh, intelligence, she's still a sociopathic. So she can't rely on that being the case. So she kills Villanelle. Hmm. You probably just, plan to do that. I just don't... It's funny talking to you because... <laughs> I just had such a different experience <laughs> of these characters. I don't think that there was any real motivation for Carolyn to kill Villanelle. It's kind of weird because you're like, oh, and you know, well, she couldn't rely on it or whatever, but like, why not kill her in Cuba then? You know, like- Because she, she needed she needed her. Caroline's motivation is all very cynical. Remember, Caroline's biggest problem- She needed her in problem. Cuba for what? Well, because to everything that Caroline needed Villanelle for was Eve, because Eve represented a threat to Caroline because How? because she had a, she had connections to the intelligence community. Villanelle was Eve just an assassin. <laughs> yeah, Eve, Eve was part of MI5 and she worked for an independent contractor, but they were still licensed security officers. They were still effectively the good guys. I mean, she could have just called up Yusuf or something if she wanted. I mean, Eve was nothing to her. Villanelle was like, you know, uh -huh. I just. Eve, Eve represented us. Remember, Eve was an analyst. Eve had the evidence that the 12, she proved 12 existed, which nobody else had done yet. She got the intelligence community involved. How did she the prove the 12 existed? Carolyn came well, to because... Eve and told her, hey, this is the 12 or whatever. I really don't. I don't see like it is true that Eve found Villanelle. Yeah, but she she also found the 12, remember, because the MI5 operative who was embedded in the 12, the one they shot at the end of one of the episodes, because he was the one that the 12 had. Right. Then Caroline was demoted because of what Eve had done, because of her involvement with Eve and Villanelle. They thought she'd overstepped her authority. And, mm -hmm. of course, she lost her son. So they demoted her. So basically they made... In the intelligence community, when they take somebody who's too important to get rid of, they make them an ambassador of some country that nobody cares about. Right. I get that. I just don't see I don't I don't see any of these other connections you're making, I guess. Well like, the facts I agree with you. Yes, they, they make somebody an ambassador. She went to Mallorca, right? But then she, she remember the other thing to remember during this whole thing is Caroline is part of the twelve. That's something we didn't know at the time. I don't think she's part of the 12. Yeah, yeah, she is. She's one of those. Well, she certainly wants to be because she knew the 12. She changed sides three times in order to get close to them. She said the motivation to do that was to find who killed her son. But she already knew who killed her son. Yeah. She knew, she knew Constantine had done it by accident. I think, so her I think here in this situation, though, I think... I think they were pretty clear that she's, you know, that she pretended to not know enough. She was like, exactly, well, maybe yeah. it wasn't Constantine maybe, or who gave the order or who sent Constantine. I think it was more the fact that she was covering up her own past because she knew who the 12 were because she was there when they were incepted. Now but she wasn't. That's not who the twelve the is. Beginning. It wasn't what's her name, you know, Carolina no, no, was, or whatever. Yeah, they're just a group, aren't they? They're just a group of people who. Well, she didn't realize the, the twelve was that. You know, it took her going to Berlin to understand that that's what was happening. Well, no, I think she did. I think she. Okay, I get that you along. think they did. I just don't yeah, think, I think it's supported did. by the show. No, I think she did. The reason I say that is because of her actions. But look at what she did. She. She thought someone had killed her son and she knew Eve was looking for that person and she knew that someone in the 12 was killing the other 12 for whatever reason. They were killing their operatives. So she knew the whole thing was unravelling. It would have made more sense for her 
to simply keep Eve in the field looking for these people. But she didn't. She gave up her life, basically, and defected to the Russians. She then left the Russians hanging in order to pursue this. Why would she take all those risks and throw away her life when she, her supposed motivation was uh, to, to find out who killed her son, which she already knew. Yeah, so it's I think because she, she did playing... try to find out who killed her son. Yes, <laughs> That's the motivation. I, went... I mean, yeah. also- It's okay that you up... don't believe it, but I mean, that well, no, I I'm think is what it. they set it up to be. Like she feels like this meaninglessness, which is that hmm. this whole time she had at least a problem to solve. Have you seen the movie Memento? Yes, I agree right. in a sense. Mm -hmm. Where I differ is that, think about who Caroline is. She's a very high-ranking, very experienced intelligence officer. She's dealt with people like this her whole working life. She knows the dangers. She knows what's happening. She uncovered them all in her own department. And, all th and that would have been, she should have been a hero effectively, but... She let Eve get out of hand because she she underestimated Eve. I don't basically. agree about this too. She killed a random person without like any real evidence. That's oh, yeah, why she, she got sent to Mallorca. Well, sort of, yes, but she she did that because she thought she was doing the right thing. I understand she, she, she thought she was, you know, or whatever. Exactly. But that's why it wasn't because that's she let why Eve she get out it. of hand. Well, I don't understand your Eve, your Eve fixation well, is so surprising to me way. because you think Carolyn was the one who went and got Eve out of where whatever Korean restaurant she was working in. I mean, she could have just left Eve there. Like, I don't understand exactly. how you think Eve is the, the key here. Like Carolyn. Who, in a sense, from the very beginning, Caroline made Eve. She found her in the very first series. She I disagree. Was an analyst. Eve was already who she was going to be. It's true. No, no, and if she... it wasn't Carolyn, it was going to be somebody else to kind of say, suggest that the Eve, you know, like made this huge transition and was almost in like war, I think kind of like ignores the fact that Eve could have been out like millions, dozens of times in which she just kept reinserting herself. And why yes. did she think it? I because mean, she was, she was obsessed. And where did she get her obsession from? When she went to her bosses you think from Carolyn, where did she yeah. get her obsession from? You yes. think from Carolyn? Okay, I don't. Caroline I just don't. I just don't agree with that. Yeah. I think that that's a cheap reading of Eve the character. I think you know, even uh, Luke Jennings has said Eve is a psychopath, and that she is just embracing her psychopathic traits. Yeah, I think that's a killer. That, that's not how psychopaths work. You don't embrace your traits. You're born with them. You don't have any choice over it. Remember, I, one of the I think that's your one experience. Of the I don't think no, that's everyone's one, experience to kind one, of one, say one to of take it. your own experience and extrapolate it and say that's not how psychopaths work I think, no, no, okay maybe I, to me. I i miss maybe i misspoke but let me put it this way one of the fundamentals we're told with sociopathic personalities is an inability to learn from mistakes these they have repetitive behaviors these behaviors start very early on in life mm -hmm. eve displayed none of the early characteristics of someone with sociopathic That's tendencies. so not true. She treats her husband as if he's just like an object. Like an in, he uses, she uses him instrumentally to just kind of like fill in the blank, whatever the thing is. She manipulates him constantly. And he knows he's getting manipulated even more and more and more as she gets more blatant about it. And it's more clear that she's never conceding yep. back to him. And so then that's why he is like done with it. So it's, it's so weird for you to kind of suggest that Eve was just like living this normal, well-adjusted life. No, no, she wasn't living a well-adjusted life. She was bored because she was a very intellectual person. She, she was also bored because she was a psychopath. Was, no, I disagree because, okay. <laughs> because and also the way I would say that is as well, my other point would be the difference in age. Eve is actually older than Villanelle and other characters because the position she has in MI5 and the job she's doing, the life she has, suggests to me, even though it's never stated, that she's actually older than Villanelle by, by a reasonable amount. Remember, Villanelle's also looking for a mother figure because her mother was as bad as she was. So I thought that that's why I thought Eve developed. I don't have, in my experience and my reading, I have never, like I said, seen someone grow to become a sociopathic personality they tend to be formed very early in life well i just disagree develop. with you that 
psychopathy is a group of behaviors. I don't believe it's a group of behaviors. Uh, I think well, it is a it is an orientation to the world, right? It is your brain has different things, including attentional issues. You hyper focus on some things, you don't focus on other things that cause other issues, including you can, you know, manipulate people, you can compartmentalize really well, you're not mm. super in touch with your emotions, unless your attention is directed to those particular emotions, etc. Like, and I have beliefs too that it's associated with weak sense of self. But to the extent that you're suggesting that Eve is growing into her traits, I am trying to tell you the traits were there. They were just manifesting in different behaviors. Yes, she was maiming people at the end, but she was emotionally, psychologically maiming people at the beginning because she just used people for whatever it was yes, that she was interested lots. in. Well, that's what I was saying as well. By the way, to be clear, I said that the collection of behaviours is actually the psychologist's view of what, what they did. They, they are the trick, they are the mechanisms they use to identify someone as a sociopathic personality. They check certain behaviours in the past and behaviours in the future and say, you're on this scale, you're on that scale. So that's what I meant by that. But as you I say, behaviors can come from different places, like the grannies yeah. poisoning Russian soldiers. So if you're Precisely. saying now those, those now grannies, I don't think are... that that's like a good measurement then to kind of say, no, no, oh, but that, that was no. My point was that empathic people are quite capable of what we would regard as sociopathic uh, activities, given the right circumstances. And I see Eve as someone who was looking for adventure, bored, and was subjected to the right circumstances, crossed a line, and it became a matter of survival. And the only people she could learn from to survive, she wasn't a trained soldier, were the killers that she associated herself with. So that's why I see her development. I don't see her as beast starting off. I mean, Villanelle Gunn is even worse. And Caroline, I seen as classic, more sociopathic personas. Eve, I would disagree. I'd say she's someone who was shaped by circumstances and now the circumstances are over, she may go back from behavior. Her relationship with her husband's a complicated one because many couples go through that kind of um, phrase. Many couples have imbalance and emotional attachments. You know, one person loves the other more than the other. The people start out as couples and become separate. They divorce because they want different things in life, they go different tracks. But that doesn't suggest that they had any root reason for doing that. That could just be more circumspect. So I don't see Eve as a sociopathic character. I mean, she doesn't, she doesn't ever kill without remorse. She doesn't do it lightly. She doesn't do it, she doesn't instigate any of the violence she's engaged in. The closest she came is when she shot Constantine and she apologized for that. I so just disagree. I just think you can look at Pam too, the other character where she, when she does her first kill, she, well, her first kill is her, her brother. But when she does the first contracted kill of, yes. I forget her name. Yeah, uh, she did the, the girlfriend. Yeah, she she them, wonders, yeah. is this a right thing to do? And I think that that's mm -hmm. possible. It's not that there's necessarily remorse. It's just like, why am I bothering to do this, right? And as you continue to mm -hmm. kill people, this is true of empaths or psychopaths, exactly. is you do become more desensitized to it, right? Yes, because then it just becomes a normal thing, right? And so yeah. the fact that she kind of becomes desensitized to killing like you'd still have to train a psychopath to kill it's not true that a psychopath well, no. would just be like gun no, or villanelle not, no they not clearly not had to have no. early intervention have to, to train them that. excuse me to train them to be this way right and so i just don't understand why you're saying you know like oh well, who, Eve, all right Eve, uh, who 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 trained eve then because remember even pam got yeah, trained good question. By who trained eve I don't think anyone did. I don't think because she, was she inherently innocent. had the capacity to do that. Everybody does, though. Everybody inherently has, like I said, with the war. Everybody inherently has the capacity for violence to survive. That doesn't make them sociopathic. In fact, the opposite. I agree. Bye. Yeah. Like, just chatting to my wife now. She's wondering. I'm yelling at the phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, so I, that's what I would say. So, yeah, I don't think she was. I think that's why she was there, because Eve never fit any of the parameters for me. She just was someone who was, a, a, who was an agent. 
And we saw lots of agents. I mean, we saw other assassins. They weren't all sociopaths. Some of them were patriots, for example, or like the man who got hit on the head with a paddle who became an agent. He was capable of killing, but he clearly wasn't a sociopath because he saw himself more as a, he was more of a fanatic, for example. You can get people who have fanaticisms as their motivation for violence, and they're not psychopathic at all, or at least not any any way that be clinically decided. It's just circumstances. So I don't think I would class Eve as a, a psychopath for that reason. Mm-hmm. What I still the other character we look at then? What do you think of Constantine then? What what's his angle is what's he's an interesting character because he's equally involved in brutal killings he doesn't necessarily do them himself but he knows exactly when he points someone like villanelle at someone that's tantamount to putting a gun to their head he knows that they're going to be killed he said himself he doesn't even know why any more than they do his job is to be the handler to make sure that the psychopaths don't go off the rails, don't get out of control, and only do what they're supposed to do. And above all, don't get too creative and leave any evidence behind. So his role is quite cynical and quite cold, but he doesn't come across as being psychopathic. He comes across more as a, a result of the Cold War, like almost similar to what Caroline did, Caroline's colleagues were like. They had been trained to believe that their country was the only country in the world that was the good guys, and they were fighting the bad guys. And as they got older, they came to realize that the world isn't that black and white. I disagree but with they, you about the Cold War being good guys against bad guys. No, no, I said they've seen it that way. The, the pe- people who are involved in intelligence services are patriots to the countries they do it for. I disagree. They have to be. They have to be. In order for you to do the kind of... Take Mossad, for example. They've done some brutal stuff when they've been hunting down some Nazis. They don't do that because they think that they are not the good guys. And one, when you go through intelligence training, one of the things they do, one of the checks they make is to see how patriotic you are. They, you don't have to be a flag waving crazy, but you have to believe that your way of life is worth protecting. Your country is worth protecting. I don't Therefore, think so. It's better we can than follow up country. though. Yeah, send me a citation, a source of t- citation about that patriotism, and uh, you know. I All right, I'll look. I'll look up some material on it. But then, yeah. but then we'll think about it. What else would your motivation be? Being a spy is a very strange job. You need to some reason for doing it. I think it is a strange job. I think it's the same motivation as kind of everybody else, as you've described, which is just survival. Villanelle is an assassin for survival. She doesn't want to be in prison. She wants to be out flourishing. Eve wants to be flourishing. These people want to flourish and they well, want something it's... engaging. And so take a Constantine example, right? Mm. In a situation in which you have, you know, he grew up, he must have grown up at least partially under Stalin, right? Mm. And then you have his successors who are just acting in kind of like these bizarre ways. And it's like, you take rationality out of decisions, you take predictability out, and then suddenly you are really just doing the thing that's necessary to survive, right? Your, yeah. your reaction there is to be kind of blunted emotional effect okay. and to think that you don't control things. And so Constantine, I think you describe him perfectly as being a result of this, which is, you know, I don't make the rules or whatever. I'm just like the rest of you schmucks, all of us schmucks, which is that we just take orders from people and the better true. we take orders, the better life we have. Yes, but I would say that's true. But then I'd say that isn't going to recruit anybody at a university to give up their life to the intelligence service of the country. If they you're in the Soviet be, Union, they yes. Have to, well, yeah, but then let's not take the Soviet Union aren't the only ones with a spy network. Every well, nation has its spy network. Well, you said UK, all spy West. networks operated that way, and it's a result of the Cold War. They, and I they, don't think no, it I was that also, way in the Soviet Union for Constantine, which is why well, you mentioned this in the first place. Yeah, true. But I'm making a separate point here. I'm making the point that we said this that we, we've got to where these people are, who they are now. I'm saying that a lot of intelligence agencies, they recruit people at the beginning by using patriotism and ideology. I don't understand and how the se- separate point applies to Killing Eve. Is there an application? Well, it's because remember the other characters in Killing Eve. Killing Eve is set in the intelligence community, Russian, American, British. 
uh, they even go to uh, China at one point, don't they, and speak to a Chinese operative. One of the ones Eve kills and his superior talks to Eve. I really doubt the Chinese operative is like super high in patriotism. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, why not? I think, well, maybe okay. not. This is, I, I understand. Mean, we can move on. You, you think that? Okay. I disagree. Okay. Well, okay then. So what, what, right. Well, we've got the, the basic outline is that we, Gil and Eve is about, if we very broadest terms, uh, maybe two things. It's about psychology, the psychology of certain people, extreme, extreme psychology. And to me, it's about the intelligence community that they survive in. The 12 effectively make all the money by sitting on top of the intelligence community. They remove people and they provide information for different things. We only really see one side, don't we? For example, we never see how the 12 make their money. We get close a few times, but we never actually touch on how it's done because we're kind of stuck in the arc of the what would be in, in the British intelligence community, MI2. You've heard of MI5? And MI6? Have you heard of MI5 and MI6 in the UK? Uh, I've heard of MI6, but I don't know what the distinctions are. Okay, MI6 operate abroad. They're like the CIA. MI5 op operate locally. They're like the FBI. Mm -hmm. But there's also people called MI2, and they just, they're just they basically assassins. They take out uh, people who they think need to be killed. So they would be the, the equivalent of the black ops in the States. So those, those people exist on top of that community. Now, they have budgets, black op budgets, millions of dollars, so they can do what they have to do, destabilize nations, buy drones, all of that stuff, you know, run drugs, all of these crazy things that have happened over the years. And that money can be quite a lot of money. There's a lot of sloshing about black up funds and this to me is what I think the 12 do they basically siphon off this money for their own purposes and they bribe people and eventually over time they became the players themselves they started to interfere in intelligence community operations one to hide themselves but also to make things more profitable for example mm -hmm. if there's a war a lot of people sell weapons if they're selling weapons that's a lot of money drug trade, things like that provide lots of money. And all intelligence communities are involved in these areas. One, to police them, and two, because they're very lucrative. Yeah, I have a, a slightly different theory about the 12 is that, you know, imagine, and I just think it's like, there's not enough money sloshing around in like black ops that could ever be like worth kind of getting so involved in this. And so my idea would be that you have, uh, what do we call them? People who try to get politicians to act in particular ways. Lobbyists. Lobbyists, yeah, lobbyists right. But yeah, lobbyists, mm -hmm. I mean, a bribe is only so effective, right? But if you have blackmail, if you are able to like kill, you know, and effectively kind of hold people for ransom, that's really effective. And you can get much more, uh, you can be a better grifter, a much more, uh, you know, efficient grifter in that you're grifting not just off this black uh, black ops fund or whatever but like off of a entire economies let's say for like However, electric vehicles the only, or whatever else and so the people the only, who would di directly benefit from these these type of lobbyist activities that's how they're getting their money is they're basically a lobbyist firm where people say hey you know we need this to happen we we can't survive the industry can't survive unless this happens and they're willing to do what lobbyists you know can only bribe to do they're willing to take it one step further and introduce you know criminal activity they probably do about both i mean they, they obviously were a criminal organization that was involved in everything i mean i'm sure they run extortion rings i'm quite sure they were involved in straightforward drug deals the, the idea of them was that they started off as, as idealistic. They were anarchists. They were going to change the world. But then they got rich and realized that if they changed the world too much, they might not be rich anymore. So they decided to continue to perpetuate the situations they're in. It's, war's always good for business. People get very rich during wars. It's just the nature of the beast. There's a lot of It's good for certain businesses. Sources. 
Yeah. Well, the ones, the legal ones involved. And also, the good thing about Black Hawk budgets is they're not official. You can't really go to jail for stealing something that nobody knows exists or nobody's willing to admit exists. But it's very clear they're not going to jail anyways, you know, and to get that no, no, level of power. Of people, yeah. And also they have these, like you said, they have a fear thing. They've got that terror. Ordinary people are never going to challenge them because they've got all these villanelles and really terrifying people under the thumb that, you know, they, they wouldn't have to say very much to get people to back off when they explained what it is would happen to them. And the people that don't uh, back off just basically die, sometimes in dramatic ways, sometimes in ways that look like accidents. But the point is, they say, if you don't do what you're told, this will happen to you. But it was interesting that the infighting, though, I thought was, was good. I'd like to see a bit more about that, about why this uh, layer above the 12, these assassins suddenly started to uh, implode. Because in the first two series, the fact that the first one, when Eve's trying to find Villanelle, it's all very well organised and very hidden. and Nobody knows what's going on. And it takes Eve ages to even convince her superiors that it's actually happening at all. They think the idea of this one assassin traveling the world, you know, killing loads of people discriminately is just insane. And well, isn't it's that real. mostly because one of her her direct superior is a twelve member of the twelve? Yeah, I think so. But it's also because it's such a it's a, such a bit of an out there idea, and so they, they they keep it very close. They're very good at it. But later in later series, they've got problems. Helena starts killing members of the twelve. Caroline goes a bit off the rails. Villanelle becomes a bit of a loose cannon. And, and in the past, it was hinted. Remember, she went for a psych evaluation with Constantine. And it was basically said to her, no uncertain terms, if she failed these exams, as they called them, then she'd be the one that would turn up dead because they didn't want her doing things. And when she started to do things they didn't want, remember, she took a mission and she went to London and killed someone when she was told not to. And Constantine basically made it clear if she did anything like that again, she would be in trouble. And then she got a bit hooked on Eve and he told her a number of times, they don't like this, stop obsessing over this person, either leave her alone or kill her, but don't play these silly games there anymore. And she did. And later on, we find the situation's disintegrating, some fairly high level 12 operatives were being killed and Eve was getting too close to them too quickly. So there did seem to be something in the background that was going on that the fact that I think... Oh, keep going, that, sorry. Well, I, my thing, again, I think it comes down to Carolyn. I think she decided to clean house because she was starting to think things were starting to become unravelling. Uh, people were getting older, basically. Constantine was getting a bit past it the operatives were starting to get out of hand. Remember, they paired, they, they tried to pair Villanelle up with two other people and she killed them. <laughs> so, you know, and then they gave her that other trainee who was just annoying and she killed him as well. So there was a there was a, an indication that things, the machine that had been running so well for the past 20 or 30 years was starting to break down a bit and it was time to start sorting things out. Hmm. So I have like a different take. I just am kind of like all the ways in which Eve gets her information just seems so outrageous in the fourth season. It's like, do you know? It is Eve, a bit convenient. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's yeah. so convenient. You know the phrase Deus ex machina? Yeah. The God in the ghost machine. Ghost in the machine. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like, wow. <laughs> okay. She just happened. And then they don't realize Helene's dead. So they just send the location and then they show up to the pub and conveniently yeah. none of the 12 are there. They've decided to change to this other like place where it's like, oh, let me just find the secret door in which they're here and nobody's yeah, on. That, Nobody that, has. That, 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 I agree, that mm -hmm. was weak. When you think of series one and two, it basically took Eve months of research and spying and information gathering and a bit of luck. And she eventually got a breakthrough. Whereas, yeah, on her own, it did seem a bit like she was like Batman. She kept finding these mm -hmm. clues. And yeah, yeah that, that's what I meant. It did like the seem TV like... Batman, not even the movie quality. Yeah, Batman. exactly. Yeah. 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 Like, oh. yeah. And I mean, that could be that the story they did have a get, the fourth season did get a bit 
I think because they knew it was the end, they were trying to wrap things up. And it did it did seem to be that, like I said, this organisation was hidden for decades and suddenly it seemed to unravel. But within the narrative, if we excuse that as a televisual failing and see within the narrative the possibility that... I mean, it does happen. I mean, look at Weinstein as a wild example. People can be... Into, these monsters and the people like that can control a lot of things. But everybody gets old and everybody starts making mistakes. And a lot of the 12 were getting to that point where they were starting to get old and make mistakes that they would never would have made in the past. Like they, they operated in cells, but they broke that. They said, like you said, they arranged to go to a pub and then they changed it, which meant they were talking to everyone. Yeah, seriously. Which is supposed to be what they, what they decided never to do. And why is Helen getting texts from the 12? Like, she supposedly yes. doesn't know them. And she's suddenly exactly. invited to their yeah. final thing. Yeah, and she's got a loose connection. She's a bit like Villanelle. And, and the series before, they wouldn't let Villanelle in. She said, I've done all this good work for you. I want to join. And Constantine said, it doesn't work that way. You don't get to apply to be one of the 12. It, and whereas it did seem to be... In the fourth season, that was kind of being hinted at. So yeah, I think basically the fourth season they did start struggling a bit. I think they were trying to wind it up as best they could, and they did have issues they were trying to um, address. And they may very well have changed some character arcs to compensate for that. They did, yeah. I agree that it seemed to be that this the contractor. In other words, instead of having a team of analysts. Eve basically had this one guy and he was everybody. Yeah. He seemed to do all those jobs for everybody. And he was a computer guy, the spy, the you know, that they contact with the agencies. He was everybody in one package. And he, he was, was a private security firm. So how would he have all these contacts? Right. Yeah. He was so much everybody that I was mm-hmm. like, is he also the 12? Because there's no way that she would be getting all this information. It just didn't seem plausible to me. Now, you know, no. in a world, you know, if you, if you understand probability that everything yes. is possible right, right, in infinite yeah. universes, right, then sure, it is possible that all it's of that possible, stuff happen yeah. in a row. But then, yeah, so is a tomato turning into an orange in front of you, but it's exactly. unlikely to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was an element that they could have made it that made it, yeah, because they did, because she needed a team to find out. And, and we never actually saw, whereas in the other series, we saw people do stuff. We never actually saw her boyfriend do anything. He just turned up with bits of paper with people's names on and started, where did he get this from? And, oh, yeah, this guy's the top guy in Venezuela. Where did he get that from? You know, yeah. and you go to this, this person knows in Helena's there and she spots her. And, of course, that was one, but she's walking up the street and she happens to see the car pull out. And that means she gets to recognise someone who's supposedly been hidden from everybody for years. Right. So there was a lot of... Um, Carolyn was a bit more believable because she'd been involved with it for so many years that she did know a lot of the players. Even though she thought some of them were dead, she did know who they were. Whereas, of course, Eve wouldn't have a clue who these people were. So, yeah, I mean, I think the fourth season was a little bit weak on that. Have we discussed that element of it? Yeah. I mean, had it... Had it ended with them walking away from each other on the bridge, in some ways that might have been a more um, satisfactory ending to it. Because I see in the book it's very different. In mm. the book they they run away together in a container and they smuggle themselves back into Russia. And Eve works with Villanelle through Villanelle's old criminal contract and they backtrack to find a person in Russia who's working for one of the Russian 12 mm. and they manage to recruit him and they get one of the 12 that way, but they don't get the rest and they end up basically backing off mm. and saying, this this isn't worth it. We're not, these guys are virtually untouchable and and whoever they are, or rather whatever they are. It's also hinted that there aren't just 12 people. Yeah. There's actually a, an organisation of some sort or a group of organisations. Right. There's even a hint that maybe they're just a, an agency, like being used by the intelligence community, almost like you said, like hired mm-hmm. hands for yeah. specific purposes. Like we want this lobby done. We want this vote going this way. We don't want this oil company getting this deal. 
sort it out and then they would be hired to do that specific role mm-hmm. rather than instigate the stuff themselves yeah. so yeah that, that did make a more, bit more sense I suppose Hmm. So, it's interesting yeah, to hear your perspective good. too having read the books as well and you, your theories are very coherent they're just i just disagree but i think it's interesting one great thing about fictional <laughs> fictional everything yeah. is that everybody can take kind of a different take from them and uh so it's in- super interesting to hear your take about it because you know because it is different from mine and uh i think that's uh, i think that's great I suppose it's a reflection of ourselves as well, because right. stories are a reflection. I mean, mm-hmm. what when people see a story, some people take very different things away from it. Some people take uh, it's good and bad, I and mean, so it's interesting. Maybe it tells you as much about yourself when you take something away as it does about the story itself. Yeah, in kind of like your own perspectives, like let's say you have been, you know, in a, a really rare circumstance situation, like you might be like, oh, yeah, that is that is more likely to happen than people realize, you know, and that probably mm. is true that there are certain circumstances where it's like, for instance, psychopaths, like 1% mm. of the population, I think is more common I, than most people think. Yeah, because yeah, we've got a large population, yeah. especially in urban areas and cities and places like when you get concentrated, it's about like gay people. There's about one mm-hmm. percent of the population is gay, but when you see some of the major cities, London, California, New York, you get a greater concentration of gay people because you've got to get a concentration of people. Mm-hmm. So one percent across the globe isn't like we're all evenly spread like some margarine. It's mm-hmm. like there'll be concentrations in different places. Plus, people of all personality types are drawn to places. Creative people are drawn to Greenwich Village. California, that sort of thing. And these tend to be where those ideas come out, whereas more uh, scientific people, maybe Massachusetts. So people go to where they think they're going to be the best opportunities for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that can create yeah, I'm just weird, mm. weird connections. Yeah. So I, I, it sounds like, you, do you have to go? <laughs> yeah, I'm making no dinner tonight. So oh, okay. I'm being told in no certain terms to go cook some dinner. So. All right, sounds good. <laughs> well, thanks so much for joining me. It was no great talking with you. You too. We'll get you Be on again soon. soon. Bye. Yeah, bye.